come to you this morning in the most humble way we know how to say thank you. Thank you for this day. And most of all, thank you for this opportunity to be in your house once again, Father. Thank you, Father, for carrying us from one Sunday to the next Sunday, Father. Thank you for all the things that could have happened in between the two Sundays from the time that we returned back to your house, Father. Just thank you for the mishaps. Thank you for uh, that delay. Or just thank you for uh, not putting us in a situation, Father, that, that we couldn't react, Father. And most of all, Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your word because we are children of your word, Father. And therefore, we are to represent you from each Sunday to the next Sunday, Father. We're always going to honor your word in all that we do, Father. And most of all, Father, I just thank you for each family that comes here, each family member, Father. Thank you for giving us the strength to lift one another up in times of need, Father. And we just say thank you. We know that you are all-knowing God. And everything that we do, if we do it through, through, through you, Father, we know that it's a success, Father. And we ask that you be with us, Father. Protect our children, Father. Give us an understanding so that we can understand them, Father. Even though we are the parents, Father, we still need to listen to the children at that time, Father. And therefore, if we go by your word, Father, we'll know the things to say to them when they come to us in times of need, Father. So, Father, we are children of the most high God, Father, and therefore we're going to set an example for you, Father, and that we ask that you would go by the hospital and touch them, someone there that needs your help, Father, someone that don't know you, Father, someone that's got to go through a difficult surgery this morning and don't know anything about you, Father, but you being the father that you are, you can be the doctor in their case. You just use the doctor as an instrument for you, Father, and most of all, Father, we just say thank you again. We can, we can never say thank you enough, Father, but we are going to try to reach out this morning and say thank you. Just thank you for this building here, Father, because we have a place to worship at, Father. Just thank you for a house. Just thank you for just being able to have breakfast with your family this morning, Father, because there were some people that didn't have a place to have breakfast, didn't have a place to call home when they woke up this morning, Father. So therefore, we just say thank you again, Father. We give you the glory and honor in everything that we do, Father. And most of all, Father, we ask that you continue to keep our pastor and his first lady lifted up, Father. Just continue to be with them. Give him the strength to continue to come in here and teach us each and every Sunday or Wednesday, Father. So we just thank you for our shepherd, Father. Thank you. We love you. We need you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, God. 
bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We were created to praise him. Hallelujah. We were created to magnify Hallelujah. him. Hallelujah. Lord, I command name. my soul to bless the Lord. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
just so you know when you don't feel like praising him you have to tell your soul I will bless him Hallelujah. I will give him praise
Do you remember? Seven days ago, I will bless the Lord at all times. And sometimes we have to get beyond our feelings, beyond our emotions, beyond our um, tendencies, beyond our idiosyncrasies, beyond ourselves and say, so you're going to line up today and you're going to bless the Lord. I'm going to take control of my soul. So you're going to bless the Lord because he has not changed be able to see the sun because it's behind clouds but the sun is there you may not be able to feel God right now but I'm going to out of obedience so bless the Lord hallelujah so sometimes we have to make that sacrifice I don't feel like it but I'm going to do it because he's worthy because he's awesome because he's keeping me because he's got my health in his hands he's got my mind in his hands hallelujah I will bless the Lord at all times so line up as Pastor said, grab your soul by the collar and say, come over here and bless the Lord. Hands, bless him on this morning. Oh, Lord, I love you on today. Hallelujah, glory, glory. He's working it out, saints. He is working it out. Hallelujah, I've got my eyes on him and he's got his eyes on me. He is working it out. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, you are beautiful on this morning. We welcome you to our morning service. Those who are streaming online, we welcome you to our service as well. We just bless the Lord on today for he is a great, great God. Strong and mighty in all his ways. Keeping him. Keeping our seed to a thousand generations. He is worthy. Hallelujah. On behalf of our pastor and our first lady, our officers, we just... Thank you for being with us on this morning. We are gathered here today to lift up the Lord. Hallelujah. I just wish more people could be in the presence to get the teaching, to get the fellowship. I just say that because every week I'm good, but I'm being encouraged every week. But you all take it upon yourselves. Seek out someone in your community to invite into the house so that they can begin to be nourished and fed. Hallelujah. I don't care how good that Easter service was, how good that Mother's Day service was, Christmas service. I need to eat weekly. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
we are just so delighted again that today is the Lord's day. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us also celebrate a, a wonderful saint in our presence this morning who celebrated her 88th birthday on Friday. Amen. Mother Harris celebrated 88 years. That's nothing to sneeze at. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Imagine the things that she's seen in those 88 years. But she's kept her hand in the master's hand. Because that's where the strength lies from day to day. From day to day. I can't think about Wednesday. I can't think about Friday. I got to think about today and tomorrow. God is going to take me across and keep me standing. Amen? Amen. If you would, I know that you just see it, but let us recite our church's declaration. The words are behind me, but they're also in our hearts. On three. One, two, three. We are a church where Christ is first and the spirit of excellence is achieved. Amen. 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 Baby, the 
You're my king, you're my life, you make everything all, I wish I could say, I'm devoted. Sometimes we just need to 
think about the words. Don't worry about me. I'm going to be all right. I'm just waiting on the Lord. You are good. You are kind. I have never seen no kind before. And forever. Bible's in your hand. Turn with me. Book of Romans. Paul's letter to the Romans. Bibles in your hand. Praise team, I need you to help me with that one. You might have to take a couple of years to work with me, but we're going to get that one. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Just want to talk a little bit this morning. The Lord is good. He's a Good, good God. Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us, all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God and who also make it intercession for us? Paul goes on to say, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress 
or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This morning I want to preach on the subject, under pressure but fully persuaded. Under pressure but fully persuaded. Under pressure but fully persuaded. Persuaded. Look at somebody say, I'm under pressure. But fully persuaded. Okay, they act like they just got here. Uh, service started at 10 o'clock. So find somebody who was here on time. Look at somebody else and tell them, under pressure. But fully persuaded. Did they look excited? They didn't look excited. Just look at somebody else. Look at somebody else and tell them, I'm under pressure. But fully persuaded. Gracious God, we thank you once again for all that you've done. We thank you for your grace, your goodness, and your mercy. We thank you, O Lord, for being in the midst of our service. You are good. And you are a kind God. Thank you for accepting our praise and worship. Thank you for being in the midst. Now, as always, Lord, we pray and ask that you speak to us through the volume of the book. Have your way in this place. Open the eyes and ears of your people. There is work to do for the kingdom. Lord, when you're finished, I'm finished. When you say it's over, then it's over. We want to leave this place hearts burning because of your word. And so, Lord, we thank you in advance for what you're going to say and do for us. We ask all these things in the matchless, lovable name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray that everyone say amen. amen. Under pressure, but fully, fully persuaded under pressure, but fully persuaded. Saints, security is a critical element in life. Security is a critical element in our life. Not only when it comes to known issues or threats, but also during those uncertainties and unknowns. Security is critical. And all those security leads to stability and productivity. It does not itself possess any stable, consensual meaning. You can say it, but I need it. Because security, it offers stability and it offers productivity. Because when it's just spoken of, it marks the parameters of a highly challenged environment only way you need security is because someone's trying to breach or get in to what someone has. The only way and reason you would need some form of security is because
because it marks the parameters of something that's valuable. The only reason why one would need security because the environment is being challenged by that on the outside. The only reason why you have security on your house because of the valuables that are inside. Why there's security on your car and other things. Why you lock your phone so then everybody won't see your photos or your texts or any other thing. Because security, what it does, it it marks and shows that there must be something that's being challenged or, or breached. But one must entertain certain questions to secure or at least feel that they are a guarded. There are some questions that one must ask feel secure or to feel that security. Uh, you know, you say, okay, now if someone opened this window, would that go off? If they break down this door, would that make this sound? If they break a glass, will it trigger the security alarm? There are some questions that needs to be entertained to feel that you are secure. One of the questions would be, how is it that this is going to be achieved? How am I going to get this security? What does it do? I know I have security, but what does it do? I need to know all the options and things available with the security that I am embracing. Has it been tested or proven? Has it met the requirement? Because I'm not just gonna put any type of security, in this case, around my house or my car if it has not been tested or met any of the requirements. These are questions that we ask when it comes to security because security is a critical element. Because it's important to me to watch over that which is valuable to me. Am I talking to anyone? I may not be talking to you yet, but just stay at your table while I come there. Um, so he posed these questions, but they are more than some trivial exercise because we are in a world where everyone thinks they are, that they have some form of strong security. Everyone thinks that they are secure. But security, in other words, is an actual con con uh, condition, rather, that it exists independently of his declaration. You can speak it, but security is independent of his declaration. Someone can say, I have security, but do you have security? Come on, y'all. It's independent of his declaration because security is an actual condition. I am secure. But security can be spoken, but it doesn't mean you have security. Are y'all with me here? One general def defin definition of security is that it's a thought to be confronted in the absence of danger, at least the absence of threats to, to a certain object. A biblical definition of security is being secure is free from danger of being taken away by an enemy. It also means 
to not be alarmed, not disturbed by fear. Security, according to the biblical definition, is a confident of, of safety. But what we must understand is that when security is not there or cannot be held up to the, or hold up to the challenges against the threats, against the, the oppositions, when it's entertained in the sense but not understood fully, what it does is slows one's productivity, it slows one's purpose, even their own persistence. When one doesn't feel secure, when one cannot handle the challenges or the threats against them, when security is not fully understood, it holds up stability and productivity. Okay, let me say this again. When one doesn't feel secure, when the threats and the challenges come up against them, when it's entertained but not fully understood, a lack of security will slow up productivity and stability. Okay? Buy a new house. Don't put a security system on there and put all your valuables in there and tell me if you can sleep. When there is no security, when you are challenged and threatened, when oppositions come against you, when there's no full understanding of being secure or security, it will cause one to lack in productivity and stability. Okay, here's an example. 1937, the Great Golden Gate Bridge was completed in 1937. And it was said that it cost over $35 million to build. And it was completed in two phases. The first slowly and the second rapidly. In the first stage, they said no safety or security devices were used. And as a result, 23 men fell to their death. However, for the final or second phase of the project, a large safety net and security was used as a precaution. At least 10 men fell into the net and were saved from certain deaths. What they said was once the net was installed and production increased 25% because those who were working felt secure. Are y'all with me here? When there's no security, there's a lack of stability and productivity. But when you feel secure, it's the reason why you walk around your house 2 o'clock in the morning, because you don't put that alarm on. When you feel secure, when there's a full understanding of security, it causes one to produce and be stable. When there's a lack of security and understanding, it causes one to lack in productivity and stability. Uh -huh. 23 men fell to their death because there was no safety there. But once the net was installed, they said production increased by 25%. Why? Because the men were assured of their security. And they were free to wholeheartedly serve and move forward in the project because they felt secure. Okay, I know where I'm going. You don't know where I'm going, but I know where I'm going, but you got to trust me, be going the same way. So it wasn't the height of where they were, nor the length of the time they may have had to work, or even the changes of the elements that they had to push through. As long as there was the right security, they can complete what they were purposed to work on. Uh -huh. The reason why productivity increased because they felt secure. Uh, Y'all with me so far here. Yeah. 
uh, uh, saints, when you hide yourself in Christ, so that when adversities want to find you, they will have to go to him first to get to you. Are y'all with me here? Because safety comes in our nearness to God, not in our distance from our enemies. Oh, good God away. Here it is, here it is. Uh, 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 uh. The closer I get to him, the more secure I feel. And it doesn't matter if it's in the presence of my enemies. Oh, good God Almighty. Somebody going to get this here. Uh, 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 the reason why I can do what I do is because I feel secure. If I didn't feel secure, then I could not produce what I'm producing. But the reason why I can produce what I'm producing is because I feel secure. Once I hide myself in Christ, no devil in hell can touch me. Okay, okay, it's easier to be righteous when there's no one or issue scraping up against your weakness. Easy to have the faith you need. It's easy to have all the strength when no one is scraping up against your weakness. But when a person is fully persuaded of something, they can't be convinced that is any other way than what they believe. And no evidence to the contrary would budge him or her from his belief. Once one is persuaded, you can't budge them. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, 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 once one feels secure, you can't change or convince them otherwise. That's why David said this in Psalm 32. David said, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. The closer I get to him, the more secure I feel. Not that the security change, the more secure I feel. And it's not from the distance of my enemies. It's from the closeness of who I am to Christ. Because as long as I feel secure, I can produce. They said, uh, I know when I was working on the job site and we would work late hours and there was a lot of equipment uh, that was expensive uh, because at one time, uh, they will come in when we would work on buildings. They would steal all the appliances and stuff from out the building. Uh, and so we got to a point that we, we gathered together and we said, we're not working in that building uh, because we're vulnerable to the attacks. Uh -huh. Don't call us until you can secure the building. Uh -huh. Once you secure the buildings, we'll feel comfortable and we can produce what we're supposed to produce. But if we got to watch our back, it's going to keep us from putting our hands on the plow. Are y'all with me here? Uh -huh. uh, 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 because you can't watch your back and watch forward at the same time. You can't hold the plow and take your hand off the plow at the same time. But if you can just promise some security, then I can promise you productivity. Uh, are y'all with me here? Because security... Makes one feel stable. Okay, okay, it is. Uh, saints, even true faith fluctuates. But the object of true faith remains constant. True faith fluctuates. But the object, Christ Jesus, of our faith is stable. Which is why there must be a reorientation of the mind, and this cannot be accomplished by the mind's own resources. But it requires the illumination of grace in Christ Jesus. That's why he says, let this mind be in you. Because if you use your own resources, you won't be stable. And I know that I know that it know that you're going to want to have 
uh, some information on your security. So let me tell you what happened that causes you to feel secure. Are y'all with me here? Uh, there has to be some reorientation of the mind. It's called the renewing of the mind. Uh -huh. uh, this is why uh, uh, every now and then uh, your alarm system company will call and say, we need to re-up or we need to uh, do some maintenance, all right, so that, that the, the threats on the outside will not affect how you feel on the inside, all right, uh, because uh, nobody will feel safe if the alarm don't go off when I need it. No one feels safe uh, if the door was open and it did not make a sound. No one feels safe if a glass was broken and no one called me to see if everything is all right. Uh, uh, but, but once you know that the system is good, uh, I don't even get this. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me start over here. Once you understand that the system is good, then you can walk around comfortably you can produce and be stable. But when you have trouble with your security, it troubles your mind also. When there's no full understanding of the security, it causes you to succumb to the devil's attacks. Uh -huh. Uh, he's wondering why uh, you don't understand the security around you. Uh, That's why David said, that, David says, and, and, and he, he anointed my head with oil. Uh, but in the midst of the enemies, uh, uh, the sheep still feel, felt secure uh, because the shepherd was watching them. Uh, the shepherd was watching, and it made them feel secure. Uh, have you noticed? Sheep don't keep, listen, they don't keep asking the shepherd, how long are you going to be here? Because uh, I want to eat over there. No. Uh, once they get a glance at the, at the shepherd, they feel secure. Uh, and they are now roaming all around because they feel secure. Uh, David says, in, in the midst of my enemies, you still perform what you had to do. Uh, there's productivity, there's stability when there's security, uh, which causes us to now secure ourselves and trust in ourselves when there's no understanding of real security. Uh, then you start to trust in yourself. Uh, I'm going to make sure they don't get on my nerve. I'm going to make sure, you know what, I'm going to watch out. I'm going to deceive. That's because you ain't got real security. Uh, real security says this. Uh, I'm just going to do what God says, and it'll heap coals of fire on you, and I ain't had nothing to do with it. That's security. Security will tell you no weapon formed against me shall prosper, because that's security. Security says he has a hedge of protection around me. That's security here. But when there's no understanding of true security, you'll start to secure yourself. You'll trust in yourself. You'll trust in yourself and only yourself and no one but yourself here. But when there's an understanding of security, you trust in God's revelation of himself and his glorious works of redemption that was done for us in Christ Jesus. I'm secure not because of what I've done. I'm secure because of what he's done. And I'm so glad it was God that did this and not me. Because if I had to secure myself, you'd break right through that. You'd take everything I got. You'd steal my joy. You'd steal my peace. Y'all ain't getting this. You'd take my love if I had it. If I didn't have the security in Christ Jesus. But because I have security in Christ, I can declare to you that this joy that I have, the world didn't, it's already secure. It's already secure. It's watched over. And nothing and no one can take it. So now keep in mind that your character is being tested. And stability is being confirmed. Because when you are pondering, reneging on your word to endure, it causes you now to have lack of stability and it tests your character. But if you keep your mind on Christ, you'll realize that when your security is challenged, it's testing your character. When your security is challenged, 
challenge is letting you know your stability. It confirms your stability. When someone comes to now challenge the house that's been secure, it confirms the stability of the house. It sets your character as well. Because when you're pondering on reneging, on your word to endure because circumstances have turned difficult or inconvenient or even unpopular. You have lost your sense of security. You're not getting this. When an unpopular threat comes your way, when a circumstance, when a situation turns difficult, when you find yourself in an inconvenient state, and then you want to renege on your word that you had security, you lost your sense of security. Y'all not getting this, but you're going to get it. When there's no understanding of who you are, when there's no understanding of where you're standing, when there's no understanding of your stability, when a trial comes your way, you're going to renege on your work. And when it's all good, you said, I got security. But when inconvenience comes your way, when circumstances turn difficult, and you begin to renege on your word, you have no sense of security. In Christ Jesus, saints, we are secure by God's love and it's that love that does not seek that which has value but gives value oh I'm going to work this thing here I, I pray you got 15 minutes God's love is seeks those who don't have value but his love gives value too so the love of God the agape or apeo if it's way you want to say it here is that love that does not seek that which has value but gives value and it even creates value uh, it's unmotivated his love it's unmotivated you can't push him to love it's unmotivated it's unmotivated by others it's not attracted to you by some kind of lovable quality that you and I have but desires to pour forth upon those without value uh, his love pour forth but to those who are unlovable uh, and those who are defiled. Uh, uh, that's why some say it's reckless but uh, no it's not reckless uh, it's called unconditional uh, the love of God uh, comes towards those who don't have no value uh, uh, it comes to those uh, uh, who are defiled and unlovable uh, uh, that's why I love God so much uh, because he found my filthy self uh, unlovable uh, defiled uh, wicked sane uh, but his love found me and caused me to desire him because the agape loves it brings value to that which it loves I cannot tell you something you can love on yourself all you want but the devil don't even recognize that love that's you loving yourself but when God loves you it sets a value that he has to secure you Y'all not getting this. Oh, you're going to get it. The reason why you have to be secure. Because now his love don't put some value on your life. The reason why he has to encamp all around you. Because the devil knows how valuable you are with the love of God. And it doesn't seek repayment. His love doesn't seek repayment for himself but for us to just walk in the security that it brings for God's love in all its practices it thrives on critical judgment and starved by evasion there's a lot of people want to talk about his love and there are many who want to evade his love but the enemy keeps trying to break in because it's something valuable because why would a good loving God love a defense person like you and I there must be something I don't see he's protecting the spirit that dwells in me he's securing me he's keeping a watch over me lay me down to sleep but God is watching over me that no weapon formed against me will be able 
Uh, help me here. Trials now. Trials will make you feel that it's easier to abandon what you don't fully understand. Trials will do that. Inconvenient circumstances will make you want to renege on what you see. Oh, it's good when everything is flowing. I am a child of God. When everything's flowing, I am the son and daughter of the Most High God. But what do you do when you get a call in the midnight hour? What do you do when you go to work and get sent home the same day and no longer have a job? What do you do? The enemy knows if you're sitting up in church, if you're reading your Bible, if you're singing your song, it must be something valuable. If it wasn't valuable, he would not attack you. Uh, but the love of God uh, put up some value on my life uh, and the devil can't stand it. Look at somebody say, the devil can't stand it. Okay, now listen. Uh, it's easier to abandon. Uh, it's easier to abandon what you don't fully understand. Uh, uh, but keep in mind that you cannot measure God's love uh, or limit it by how great or how little you suffer. You can't measure his love by that. I ain't suffering that much. God loves me. I'm suffering a lot. God does not love me. No. You can't measure his love by how great or little you suffer. For suffering always threats our, our being. Because you are valuable, you're going to be threatened. Why do you think people keep trying to break in the bank? Because it's something in there that they want. If they don't break in, it must be nothing in there. Then you keep asking God, why do I keep going through? Why do I keep facing this? Why does this keep coming my way? He keeps trying to tell you, I pray something valuable in you. And if the devil ain't bothered you in a week, you better check yourselves. It must not be nothing on it valuable. Okay. Now, 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 I know I haven't given you a point, but Mother Harris, just, just give me a minute. I'm going to give you a point here. Now, uh, uh, suffering always threatens our being. It never threatens the being of God. It may involve a threat to the completion of his purpose in a given occasion, but not deflect his purpose. Threats may come against his purpose on your life, but it won't deflect his purpose. One thing I know, I'm going to carry out everything he purposed me to carry out. Now, it may threaten my being, but it doesn't threaten God's being. Now, it may threaten the purpose, but it won't deflect the purpose. Are y'all with me here? We are asked to grab hold what has taken hold of us. Not only does his love pick me up, not only does his love polish me, not only does his love secure me, but it's also designed to pull me through to completion. And did you not forget how valuable you are? Okay. Oh. Uh, his love picks me up. His love polishes me off. His love secures me. But here it is. His love is designed to pull me through to completion. Okay. Okay. Because something made Paul have to say these things. Did I not get that? What shall we say to these things? Let me tell you something. God's love will pick you up. It will polish you off. It will secure you. But his love will also pull you through. Okay, okay. Uh, Philippians 1.6 says this, that we're supposed to be confident of this very thing. Oh, saints, we're going to be on another spiritual level in our desire for the Lord after this. We're supposed to be confident 
of this very thing, Philippians 1, 6. That he who had began a good work will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Not only did his love pick me up, polish me off, not only did his love secures me, but his love also pulls me through. For me to say, then what can I say to these things? Y'all not getting this yet. Y'all not, not getting this. Be confident of this very thing. That his love is going to pull. Now, now, be confident that not only did his love pick me up. Be confident that not only did his love polish me off. Be confident not only did his love secures me. But be confident that his love is going to pull me through. Okay, okay, all right. Without this consummate, consummatory uh, experience, we would not be able to speak about God's love at all. It's the reality to which we cling to in a broken, confused, and threatening existence. Okay, can I go a little deeper? God's love for us in Christ has another mode of faithful. His love for us in Christ has another mode of courageous, waiting for a consummation not yet realized. In other words, his love not only lives from the statement of fulfillment, but from the loyalty not yet fulfilled. Oh, good God Almighty. Not only did his love find me, hold on this, Reverend Allen. Hold on, hold on. But his love pulls. Y'all not getting this. Y'all not getting this. Y'all not getting this. <laughs> Many people have left off that his love found you and that it polished you up. But his love also. And Reverend Allen said, then what can I say to these things? If God be for me, y'all not getting this yet. Y'all not getting this yet here. <laughs> Y'all not getting this here. Uh, it reveals itself. It reveals itself not only in the enjoyment of completion, uh, but in the suffering of not yet. Uh, love enjoys itself. Uh, not just in completion, uh, but also in the fulfillment. Uh, it enjoys itself. Uh, it enjoys itself in the suffering of not yet. Uh, in other words, it's showing its obligation uh, and its character. It's concrete. It's patient with the receiver's infirmities. Y'all not going to get this. You're going to get it. I'm going to show you the way the Lord showed me. I save you. I polish you up. I pick you up. And my love is going to pull you through. You just got to trust my security. Then what did you say? What can I say to these things? If God be for me, then who can be against me? I can be threatened all day long, but his love is designed to pull me. Are y'all with me? <laughs> Which is why you can yell at the top of your lungs <laughs> that I'm under pressure, <laughs> but I'm still fully persuaded. <laughs> I'm fully persuaded. <laughs> I'm fully persuaded, Paul says. <laughs> what do we say to these things? <laughs> I'm fully persuaded. <laughs> now keep in mind <laughs> that Roman now, <laughs> the letter, it was no ordinary letter, but a sophisticated argument <laughs> against everybody challenging all that Christ was has done so paul writes from corinth to the church in rome which was on his mission radar but he never was able to visit rome the roman church and he didn't organize the church himself yet he has some insight some understanding and a message that he wanted to share with them to strengthen their walk in christ jesus now keep in mind rome was one of the largest influential cities at that time and it was known for many Jewish and Gentile believers mostly in this church most Gentiles and when the letter was being written by Paul they were experiencing a time of relative peace prior to now Nero's persecution 
because his love not only takes me through peace it will take me through persecution so Paul writes this letter prior to the Christian persecution by Nero the primary thing that was running throughout Rome the Romans letter is the revelation of God's righteousness and his plan for salvation that's running all through that what's all running through there is the great power of God in Christ the resurrection of our Lord and Savior and how the love of God sustains us so Paul laid it out for Romans chapter 1 he started out how sin separated us chapter 2 that the works we never had but now we can obtain in the right standing in Christ Jesus chapter 3 how God provided a way apart from the law which is now justified by faith chapter 4 that salvation was always the plan of God from the patriarchs to the Old Testament into the New Testament chapter 5 he tells us that since we are justified we have peace with God through Jesus Christ chapter 6 we are free from our sins nature and even though your flesh is still there you can command your soul to bless the Lord chapter 6 Seven tells them to live according to the new flat the new nature that you received in Christ Jesus. Then chapter eight was a summary conclusion to everything he just said. So verse 38 through 39, it bears the lifeblood of the gospel. It's about the reality of God's love towards us. Now it's amazing how this chapter begins rinsing. It's amazing how this chapter starts with no condemnation and it ends with no separation y'all not getting this that's some security look at somebody say that's some security it start off after 8-1 there is therefore no condemnation it ends with there is no separating it starts off with no condemnation and it ends with no separation So he asks seven questions. And then he makes seven statements. And then he gives an Old Testament quotation. And then he closes with one of the most powerful declarations. Oh, good God Almighty. Branch one. His love did more than what you think. Uh-huh. You still can't get past the polishing you up. Because every time he asks you to do something beyond what you think you can do, you question his love. Okay, y'all not getting this here. Many can't get past uh, the picking you up uh, because you always falling down. Uh, but his love doesn't discriminate because you was not lovable when he found you. What makes you lovable is because of his love on you. And it makes you valuable. Are y'all with me? Uh, you got to be valuable. If the devil keeps pricking at you, knocking on the door of your heart, trying to enter into your mind, trying to kick things over in your life, there must be something that's being guarded. Uh-huh. That's why you got to say, God done gave me something and the devil can't take away. I'm so glad that his love is my security. His love is my security. And when there's no full understanding of his love, then I'll give way to the enemy's attack. But once I am feel like I am locked up, tied up and tangled up in Christ Jesus, come what may you ain't gonna be able to get in you can't take my mind you can't change my heart cause I'm locked up I'm tied up and I'm tangled up in Christ Jesus branch one write this down God's love and purpose for me is indestructible God's love and purpose for me is indestructible. Verse 31, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can 
it be against us. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall we not with him also freely give in us all things? Verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that it is risen again, who is even at the right hand of the Father, who also maketh intercession for us. Paul wanted us to know that the verdict has already been pronounced. Who keep talking about a dead case? Y'all not getting this. Y'all not getting this. <laughs> who keeps talking about a case that has been dismissed? My life is not a cold case. Y'all not getting Y'all not getting it. I got to find somebody that can get this here. Uh, uh, he says, uh, Paul wanted us to know that the verdict has already been pronounced. Then what can you say to these things? Because the verdict on my life has already been pronounced. So here it is. He maketh intercession. All right, here is intercession, the Greek word anthrokaro. Uh, it's a courtroom term. I'm going to help somebody out here. It's a courtroom term, and it refers to the word of a defense attorney <laughs> or an advocate. In other words, if Jesus is your defense attorney, you know you're going to win the case. One time since I had to go to court. Uh, and what made me feel secure is when my lawyer says, um, I'm well known in the courthouse. So all my fear went away. Because as we were walking down the courthouse, everybody was greeting her. And the more people that greeted her, the more secure. And when I sat in the courtroom, she said to me, you ain't got to say a thing. I'm familiar with the courthouse. Y'all not getting this. Intercession is a term that's used in courtrooms. It's called a defense attorney. But keep this mind in mind. The one to whom all judgment or condemnation belongs to is your defense attorney. The one who can convict you is your defense attorney. Listen, the one who can pronounce you guilty is on your side. Then what can I say to these things? If God is my defense attorney. Somebody ain't getting it. You can't say nothing. Case dismissed. And if you raise up a charge, I got the best defense attorney on my. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why all Satan can do is accuse you. It is, it is, it is, Sister Ernestine. He can't bring you back to court. That's right. That's right. Come on. Okay, okay, okay. All right. What you need to know, there's nothing to charge when the case is dismissed. So why are you listening to somebody who can't raise the case back up? What you need to tell the enemy and your haters, I'm sorry to tell you that case was settled a long time ago. What shall we say to these? If God is for me. Paul is saying this. 
that the only person who could actually condemn me actually condemned in my place. The one who could condemn me was condemned in my place. Then what can we say to these things? Are y'all with me here? All right. The one who has the right to pronounce guilt and declare us guilty died in our place. The one who can call me guilty rose from the grave and sitting at the right hand of the Father and secured my position. Devil case. Okay, John chapter 5, verse 22. Who can lay charge to God's elect? That's what Paul says. I know I got thrown off a horse. I know I dragged Christians and I killed them, but I've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And who can lay charge? chapter 5 verse 22. John chapter 5 verse 22. Here it is. John chapter 5 verse 22. For the father judges no man, but had committed all judgment to the son. And because I'm your defense attorney, your case has already been dismissed. <laughs> Psalm 59 verse 6. Psalm 59 verse 6. Psalm 59, verse 6. Uh, they return at evening. They make noise like a dog and go around about their city. Uh, uh, is, that, is that the right scripture? Uh, Psalm 59, 6. Psalm 59, 6. Okay. Uh, try 54, 6. I may have written it down. Try 54, 6. Is that not it? Is that not it? We'll move on. Okay. I will freely sacrifice unto thee. I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. The only thing I have is thank you and gratitude because I knew how the case was going to end. When you have charges against you, not trumped up charges, real charges against you, and you know that you're going to be convicted, and then you find out that the charges against you was dismissed. Do you have any complaints? All you have is praise for your defense attorney. Okay. Okay. Okay, that ain't work. Branch two. First of all, you need to unline this. Verse 33. Who shall lay anything who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Oh, this is going to get good here. Uh, branch two. Branch one, did you get branch one? God's love and purpose for me is indestructible. Branch two, God's love and purpose for me is invincible. Okay? It goes on. I have been elected by God. My case has been dismissed. Are we on the same page so far? Then verse 35. Well, it was all by his love for me. Then who going to separate that? In other words, what Paul is saying, who in this world and out of this world can separate me from the love Okay, okay, okay. All right. Here it is. First lady, come here. You're the only one I can hug this close, and it won't be in the church news. Uh. Come here. Uh. I elect you, and I love you. Now, once I love you, even when you try to pull away, my love is not based on you. It's based on my love. Are y'all with me? Even when you turn your head away from my instructions, I love you, I instruct you. Because my love is not based on your love. It's based on my love for you. Are y'all with me so far? Now, 
that my love in return uh, should make you want to love me back. Uh, not your love, uh, but the love that you're receiving from me. Uh, are y'all with me? Uh, no, you don't smell good, but I love you. You're smelling good now. Uh, no, you didn't look good when I found you, but you're looking good now. Uh, it wasn't you. It was me and you uh, and my love for you. Uh, now, come here, Reverend Alec. Uh, now, now that I'm loving you uh, and I'm teaching you how to love me back, uh, then what can separate, try to pull her apart, uh, what can separate uh, her from me? Uh, now, she can turn her head uh, uh, towards the attacks uh, and I'll say, keep your eyes on me. Uh, she'll try to touch uh, that thing that's trying to, i say, keep your hands on me. Uh, but she has to say uh, for herself uh, that love is so great. Uh, what can separate me uh, from the love of God? Uh, what can keep me uh, from fulfilling my purpose? Uh, come hell or high waters. Uh, I'm secure uh, by the love of God. Uh, and who can lay charge uh, to God's elect? Somebody shout hallelujah. Here it is. Here it is. So what he does, Reverend Allen, Mother has deals your credit. He lists seven afflictions. Go ahead. That represents many of the problems that Paul was facing and that we may have to endure. But there will always be something or someone who wants to trouble your life to separate you from his love. But keep in mind, God's love never disappears. Just like Job. It is. He may leave your question unanswered, but he won't leave you alone. Now not getting this here. He may leave your question unanswered, but he will never leave you. Okay? The enemy is going to send all kinds of life-threatening, joy-stealing attacks to threaten your faith. The word separate here literally means to violently tear from or to completely divide. The word is saying nothing can force or pull me apart from his love. Nothing can violently tear me away from his love. And many times, these attackers will hate one another, but will make common peace among themselves to try to dismantle the work God has for you in your life. Come on. Okay? Come on. Here it is. Think of Thomas. Here it is because they don't believe me, Brother Chauncey. Turn to Luke chapter 23, verse 10. You don't believe that there are people out there that's trying to pull you away from the love of God and separate you from the purpose, and they'll come together. Demons will come together to attack you, but they hate one another. Okay, okay, all right, I'm going to prove it, I'm going to prove it. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him, Jesus, verse 11. And Herod with his men of war sat at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous uh, robe and sent him again to Pilate, verse 12. And the same day, Pilate and Herod were made friends together for before they were at enemy. They hated each other, but they came together to try to destroy Jesus. And there are some people that don't like each other, but they'll come together to try to destroy your purpose. Herod and Pilate hated one another. But there was something valuable that they wanted. So the two that hated each other came together with a common peace to destroy. Now Paul 
Paul is saying, there is no state of being in which you can be separated. So then he lists, oh, I got some time up in here. Then he lists the affliction. He says in verse, uh, verse 35, nothing can violently tear me away from the love of Christ. He says, let me just name some things so that you can understand. Shall tribulation, that's the pressure or pressing towards someone like an external situation of hardship. Say, so hardship pull me away? Somebody say no. Okay. So, so distress, which is physical or mental, emotional, heartache, and pain. So distress pull me away, Paul says. He says, so persecution, which meant you are being hunted down to be harmed. Not even persecution is going to tear me away. No famine or nakedness, which can be a result of an economic is issue, which can cause one to be destitute. Not even my poorness can tear me. I ain't not getting this. Okay. Now. Not even peril, dangers that the world is dealing with can tear me away. Nor a sword, which was in that time many were being persecuted and martyred for the gospel of Jesus Christ. What Paul is saying, a sword can't even cut me away. Okay, okay, somebody, somebody gonna get this. Branch three. You need to know this. You need to know this. Every child of God should be walking around with their head up high. Because you got security. Uh, Brother Lamont, let me talk to you real quick. Uh, I used to have a Hyundai. Uh, uh, you know, Hyundai, Hyundai. It wasn't expensive, you know. Uh, but because I did upholstery, I redid the whole inside. It was a white Hyundai. I redid the inside, all white inside, and blue piping. It was piping back in the 80s. Okay. Uh, um, and I had a, a serious uh, Blanco system in there. Uh-huh. Uh, and I used to park it at the movie theater. But it didn't matter where I was parking it because y'all didn't get that one. Y'all didn't get yeah, yeah. See, see it, it didn't matter where I parked because I had a good alarm system. And I can be in the hood. What I'm saying to you, it doesn't matter where you find yourself. And they could be standing around your car. But as long as there's a security system there, they're going to think seconds before they try to. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Branch three. His love and purpose for me is indestructible. God's love and purpose for me is invincible. Branch 3, God's love and purpose for me is inseparable. Verse 38. Okay. He lists the seven afflictions. He already told you the case has been dismissed. He said, I have been elected by God and telling the Roman believers as well. He says with them in the summation of, of Romans chapter 8, there is no condemnation. Okay. And then he explains the thickness of security of God's love on my life. Then he says, I'm persuaded. Okay. Now watch out here. God's love and purpose for me is inseparable. For I am persuaded. Now he goes in. <laughs> Y'all not getting it. Not only did he list affliction, but he want to show you how thick the security is. Okay? 
For I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, angels, nor principalities, powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Persuasion requires understanding. Because once you understand, you're persuaded. So Paul is telling us that not only is Christ over these various dangers, but he's also over the powers behind these dangers. Okay, 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 all right, all right. So then he gives Reverend Greeley 10 designations, beginning with either neither or the word nor. This time, he went to the opposite ends of the spectrum. You want, want, to, want to see how, how bad your security system is? Death? No life. Angels or demons? He went to the ends, the opposite ends of the spectrum to show you how thick your security is. All right. Present or things to come? Look at somebody say, you're secure. Okay. Okay. Now, what he does is, he says, I'm persuaded. And he gives us this perfect and forever I know. It's perfect and forever I know. By using the Greek word pytho, which means convinced. But it also makes it passive perfect and personal. Okay, all right. Paul is saying, I have been and continue to be and I am persuaded. <laughs> because pytho is passive, perfect, and personal. Pytho. I have been, I continue to be convinced and I am persuaded. Pytho is passive, perfect, and personal. Somebody not getting it. Paul says, I know. It's a forever I know. Okay. I'll say it again for those who don't understand. Pytho is passive, perfect, and it is personal. So what Paul is saying in verse 38. I'm going to give you a forever I know. Okay. See, that's when that ee on the keyboard would have happened. That's when the drums would have happened. That's when somebody would have started shouting. But we may not be in that type of church. So let me share, share it with you again. Pytho means convinced because it's passive, perfect, and it's personal. So Paul says, after I just shared you with all this stuff, I am forever I know. Okay, all right. Okay. I am persuaded. Passive. I have been convinced. Perfect. It's continuous. I am relying on it now. Personal. This is the first person. He is not saying you are convinced. He's not saying we are convinced. Not because of my mother, not because of my father, not because of my wife, not because of my husband, not because of my BFF, not because of my family, or even my pastor. He said, I am. Passive, perfect, personal. I've been convinced. And I'm still convinced. And I am persuaded. Lord, uh, take me to a tent where people going to shout uh, when they hear your word. I am persuaded. I've been persuaded. I'm persuaded now. And I'm going to forever be persuaded that nothing is going to separate me from the love. Okay, okay, okay. 
So in other words, what Paul is saying, I don't come in to be convinced. I came in because I am convinced. If your salvation depends upon your hanging on to God, you are in deep trouble. You are not being sustained or even going to heaven because you're hanging on to God. You are being kept and going to heaven because God is hanging on to you. Well, well. Because I don't try to let go a lot of times. But I'm glad that I'm not going by my hanging on. I'm going by his holding on to me. And I am persuaded. Hey. All right. God never breaks a contract. I'm going to help somebody out this morning. He never breaks a covenant. He never breaks a contract. He never misleads. He's always going above and beyond. He proved himself passive. He keeps on proving himself perfect. But only you can make it personal. I know. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. He's already proved himself. He keeps proving himself. But only you can make it personal. He's already proved himself. Let there be. He keeps proving himself. Let you be. But only you can convince yourself. Okay. I am convinced. Which means he don't have to give me no more evidence. I got enough from the let there be to know that nothing can separate me from the love of God. And it doesn't matter what pressures come my way. I am fully persuaded. Hey. There are pressures that's going to come your way. But this is what he says. We are super conquerors. Okay, somebody gonna get this. Reverend, can I use you again? Uh, I want you to walk up here, but just kind of stump your toe uh, on this. Just kind of like you're gonna trip over the step and come up. Come up. Okay, that's somebody walking on their own. Are y'all with me? But I'm more than conquer. Y'all didn't get that one. <laughs> All these illustrations that y'all not getting this. When you're walking on your own, you're going to stumble over everything that comes your way. But Paul says, I am persuaded that we are more than a conqueror. It doesn't matter where I go, what I got to deal with. I'm being led by the love of God. And no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper because I've been held by the love of God. And it doesn't matter. Come hell or high water. Neither death nor life. Principalities or angels. I have been held by the love of God. And I am convinced on this day that nothing can separate me from the love of God. Somebody say I'm going through some pressures But I am fully persuaded Do you know Your tax says value the attacks on your life sets value to what God is doing in your life. I am pro 
first way. When I rededicated my life to Christ, Mother Harris, see, they don't do this anymore because they moved away the altars and put lights and smoke screens there. Uh, uh, but, Sabrina, when I grew up at church, we would come down the altar, the altar, uh, and the pastor, uh, uh, you know, they would roll up some toilet paper uh, just in case you start purging. You know, they used to call it purging. Yeah. But I remember uh, when I rededicated my life uh, and I would come up for prayer, uh, the pastor would start praying. Uh, and then she would call the others, uh, elders around, to pray for me. Uh, I didn't know what was going on. Uh, she would empty a whole bottle of oil on my head. Uh, she would start taking my shoes off. Uh, she would start anointing my feet. Uh, and then she would start speaking in unknown tongues. Uh, she used to tell me uh, that God is going to put you in position uh, to bring the message, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and the devil is going to try to tear you apart. Uh, but I want you to know uh, he's anointing your head with oil. Uh, he's going to keep you uh, in perfect peace. Uh, and can I tell you something? Uh, since that day, uh, 1991, uh, when I rededicated my life, uh, I've been going through some pressures. Uh, I've been going through some pains. Uh, I've been going through back. I done felt jealousy. I done went through malice. People hate me for no reason. They persecute me. They say all men are evil. They done lied on me and hide their hands. Picked up stones and threw them at my family. They done picked up attitudes. They done got rumors on me. I done been in everybody's mind for the wrong reasons. But can I tell you something? I've been through the storm. I've been through the rain. I had up downs. I had pains in my life. I've been on the mountain. I've been on the mountain. I had some friends. I lost some friends. I've been in some churches. Got kicked out of churches. But I stopped by to tell you that I am persuaded that nothing will separate me from the love of God. I am persuaded that God will keep me in perfect peace if I keep my mind stayed on him. I am persuaded it doesn't matter if all the fingers are pointing against me. I'm here to tell you. I stop by to let you know that nothing's going to separate me from the love of God. It's not my love. It's his love. And I want somebody who understands the pressures of life. You had to push your way this week. You had to push your way through school. You had to push your way on the job. But you throw back your head. You yell. I'm under some pressure. But I'm fully persuaded. Is there anybody here fully persuaded? Is there anybody here that are convinced? Is there anybody here can let the world know that nothing going to separate me? Nothing going to separate me. Nothing's going to tear me apart from the love of God. I am convinced he going to love me in season and out of season. I am convinced when I'm up, he's loving me. When I'm down, he's loving me because it's not my love, but it's love for me. And I am persuaded. Is there anybody here? Am I speaking to a more than conqueror, which is the Greek word Nike, which means above and beyond. I'm going above and beyond every issue, every pressure, every gossip, every rumor, every backbiting. I'm more than that. Look at somebody say I'm more than that. The devil's a liar. I can make it through. The devil's a liar. I'm an overcomer and I'm a live because he lives in me. And if God raised Jesus from the dead, surely his love can keep me. Look at somebody say I am convinced.
Do you know what brings out the brilliance of a diamond? Because the more the pressure is applied, the shinier it gets. Let me tell you this morning. The devil hates that you have joy. And as much as he tries to attack you, he can't break the love of God over your life. And once a child of God know that they are hid in Christ, you can be productive and stable. Talk about a case that's been dismissed. And if any other charges arise, it is. Talk to my defense attorney. See, people don't like that. Some are not going to like it because things of the spirit is foolish and things of the flesh. But you just have to tell them. How are you going to do so and so and so and you was a, you are absolutely right, but you need to talk to my defense attorney. Because I don't even know how to argue the way he can do it. It's almost like, oh, uh, Satan walks up and says, you know Rhonda, and you know Rhonda, and you know Rhonda, but I already know what you're going to say. Your love is watching over her. Y'all not getting this. When you understand that, you can be stable and productive. When you know you are secure, you can be stable and productive. No know Madeira ain't doing so. And you know Madeira, and you know Madeira, and you know Madeira, but I know, I know your love is covering her. When you understand security, you can be productive. And That's why I can give him praise. That's why I can give him glory. Because I'm secure. That's why there's liberty wherever the Spirit of the Lord is. That's why it's freedom in Christ Jesus. Because I'm secure. And once you realize and understand security in Christ Jesus, you can thank him. Thank you for watching over me when they broke in the house two doors down while I was asleep. I have a tight security. You know, Jesus said in the Old Testament, I mean, God said in the Old Testament, I created the blacksmith. Blows coals of fire. I created him. But then he also said, and no weapon. That's right, no weapon. In other words, the enemy is making a pile of artillery that he's never going to use against you. You know what's so frustrating? Is when you can have a closet full of weapons and can't use them. Well, well. He says, no weapon formed against you. Yeah. And then Paul, he says, I am persuaded. You ain't got to convince me. Nothing's going to separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. 
Hang on your feet. I ain't getting to heaven holding on to him. I'm getting to heaven because he's holding on. Listen, we've been doing this for a while. You already know the drill. We're going to find three people. Because one, it's good to see them. Two, it's good to be seen. Three, we came here to fellowship. I want you to find three people and tell them I am persuaded. And I want you to say with confidence that I am Nothing is going to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. I am persuaded. On the count of three, look around, find it. This is real. This is our fire drill. On the count of three, you find three people and you tell them, I am persuaded. Can we get some shouting music? Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless. Come on and bless. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless. Everybody. Hallelujah. Y'all ready? Hallelujah. 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 One. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Three. Go ahead and find three people. Tell them I am persuaded. Come on, bless the Lord with me. I am fully persuaded. I am fully persuaded. I am convinced that nothing can separate me from the love of God. Somebody say, I am fully persuaded. I am fully persuaded. Nothing can separate me. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. I am fully persuaded. I am convinced. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, saints. Anybody convinced? Is there anybody fully persuaded? Anybody fully persuaded? Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am persuaded. I am convinced that nothing can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord with me. 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 Oh, I'm having a good time. Hallelujah. I'm having a good time. Can somebody come up here 
and just high five me and tell them, tell me you're persuaded. Can somebody just tell me, I am persuaded. I am persuaded. I am fully persuaded. I am persuaded. Yes, I am. I am persuaded. Yes, I am. I'm fully persuaded. And nothing's going to separate me from the love of God. Nothing can separate me. I am convinced. I'm convinced. Father, bless our going out. Give us traveling grace and mercy while we sing our way into your presence. You are dismissed. Somebody bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. You are dismissed. Hallelujah.